Welcome back. We're picking up where we left off in our previous tutorial. In part two in this tutorial, we're going to incorporate a component pattern into our form. I'm going to begin by suppressing the blue cube. In a later tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this with programming. Let's begin by selecting a component to pattern. First, I'll select the component. And I'll select the column direction. Select this edge. Let's say two units. Distance, 40 millimeters. Now the row direction. So I'll select this edge. Click here to change the direction. And let's use one instance. I'll leave two millimeters as the distance. This is simply one way to easily identify which parameters control what. For example, the parameter equal to 40 millimeters controls the column spacing. Now when you mouse over, you see the parameter name. Here's column spacing. Up above, column count. Let's cancel out and get back to the parameters window. Now you can easily identify which parameters control what. Click Done. Double click on Component Pattern 1. Now when you mouse over, you'll see the parameter name. So for example, D4 controls column spacing. Let's cancel out and get back to the parameters window. As you remember, D6 controls column count. D5 controls the row count. D4 controls column spacing. D3 controls the row spacing. Now we need to create a few custom parameters as well. The first will be row length. And just click outside this field to register. Let's add another. We'll call it column length. Click outside to register. And let's click add numeric to add another. This one will be distance between rows. And click outside to register. And we're going to add one more. Click add numeric. This one will be distance between columns. All right, let me just take a moment to touch on something here. When you're naming parameters and variables, you want to accomplish two things. One, that the name is easy to understand, and two, that the name's not too long. For example, for the parameter distance between columns, I could type a much longer name like distance between cubes in columns, but this is a bit long. I can use an abbreviation also like DBC, but that's not a very common acronym, so perhaps this would make my colleagues or I confused when we're trying to interpret my code a few months from now. I probably wouldn't remember what DBC stands for. So something to keep in mind. One more thing here before we move to the code. The row length parameter has a multi-value list. Let's delete that. We'll go to Edit Multivalue List, and then Shift Select the Values. Click Delete, and OK. Now, if you try to insert your parameters into your form and then edit afterward, you're going to have some problems. Let's click Done. Let's right-click on our form and select Edit. First, let's bring in a new group. So just drag it from the toolbox. I'm going to drag it above the whole diameter. And let's place row length and the column length parameters here as well. Now let's edit the labels. I'll call this one row and this one column. By the way, when I mentioned the multi-value list before, 
I was talking about the text box property. Right now, we've got text box listed. If we'd left the multi-value definition in place, here we'd see list box, radio buttons, and so on. Lastly here, let's rename the group. I'll call it row and column length. Just press tab on the keyboard to register. Let's bring in one more group. Let's bring up the distance between row and the distance between column parameters. So they now belong to group two. Let's rename the group. We'll call it distance between cubes. Let's rename this one rows. Down below, we'll call this one column. And tab to register. Let's click OK and get back to our code. Rules tab, double click on cube size. Let's delete this commented line of code. Go to model parameters in the model tree. First thing to do, let's bring in row spacing, space equals sign space. Now go to user parameters, red cube parameters, space plus sign space and another user parameter, distance between rows. Next line. Let's go to model parameters, column spacing, space equals sign space, back up to user parameters, red cube dimension, space plus sign space, distance between columns. Now let's write some code for the number of rows and columns. Let's go back to model parameters, Let's select row count, space equals sign space. Here we're going to use the floor function. You might remember this from a previous tutorial. The floor function rounds fractional numbers towards zero. So in our case, the rounding would go down to the nearest positive integer. Back to user parameters, row length, divided by row spacing. Right click and copy and right click and paste it down here. Let's go back to model parameters. Now we're going to write the code for column count. Space equals space. Bring in the floor function. Now back to the user parameters. Double click on column length divided by column spacing. We'll just right click and copy that parameter. Right click and paste it here. Before I click OK, notice here that the column length is only one millimeter. Let's click OK and see what happens. As a result, we've got a problem with the component pattern. Later on, we'll learn how to write code to prevent this type of error. So let's go to our form, click on parameters control. Let's make this value 100 millimeters. That'll be our row length, 100 for the column length as well. Click apply, and everything works fine. Let's change the red cube's dimension to 20 millimeters. Tab, and apply. Now let's run the whole diameter rule, and we see that it's run, so it all works okay. And this concludes the second part of this exercise. We'll see you back in our next tutorial where we'll expand the functionality of our program just a little bit more.